Yo, what up? It's your boy, Mr. E. And today we're going to be answering an age old question. Does McDonald's sell burgers? So we're gonna take a quick field trip and get to the bottom of this. Hi, thank you for choosing us. What can I get you? Yes, I was wondering, does McDonald's sell burgers? Wait, are you dividing with the standard algorithm? Uh, why, yes I am. Uh, please, pull up to the second window. Uh, we'll take care of you. Thank you. There you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba, I'm loving it. Wait. I should have ordered the Travis Scott meal. All right, enough of the fun and games. Does McDonald's sell burgers is just a good way to remember the steps when you're doing standard algorithm for division. So DMSB actually stands for divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. If you can remember this, it'll make it a lot easier when you're trying to divide using the standard algorithm. So let's take a look at an equation. We've got 8,340 divided by 15. Now these are a lot of really big numbers with lots of digits, but using standard algorithm will probably be the best way to help us solve this. Let's give these numbers and letters a few names first. So the first number is gonna be called the dividend, okay? A lot of times we think the bigger number has to be the dividend, but it's not always the case. So the first number is the dividend. The second number is the divisor and the answer to a division problem is called the quotient. Those are important words to remember, so I definitely write this down. So let's go through a couple steps. Step one, put the dividend in the garage and the divisor outside the garage. So here's our garage, totally looks like a garage, right? And then we've got our dividend on the inside of the garage and our divisor on the outside of the garage. We're gonna put the quotient on the top when we get our answer. Step number two, we're gonna create a what I know column. Now, my old students have lovingly referred to this as a Wick column, like John Wick. Um, so I use some good magic to bring this all to, together, but this is actually something that might take a little bit of time. Um, the nice thing is, is you only need to do the numbers zero through nine. I do tell some students if you only want to go up to five and then see if you need six through nine later, you can, but high quality students always do zero through nine. The next step is going to be to see how many times the divisor can fit into the first number. And it's just the first number, it's not the entire dividend, okay? So you look at the divisor, it's 15, and we're gonna find out how many times it fits into eight. Well, 15 is a number that is bigger than eight. If I had a size 15 foot, I couldn't fit it into a size eight shoe. I just would not fit. So it fits zero times, okay? So that is the D, divide. We're doing eight divided by five, which we cannot put 15 into eight. The next step is to multiply that number by the dividend. So we're gonna multiply zero times 15, which would give us zero, and that is the multiply step. Then the next step is subtract the numbers. So we're gonna take eight and zero, and we're gonna subtract them, which of course will give us eight. Then the next step is to bring down the next number. So we're gonna take that three, and we're gonna bring it down. Now, step seven is something we're going to do kind of over and over again until we get our answer. We're going to repeat steps three through six until all the numbers in the garage have a number over top of them. So we're going to have a total of four numbers, okay? So let's go back to the D, divide. So we're going to ask ourselves, how many times can 15 fit into 83? Well, if I take a look over at my what I know column, the biggest number on the right side of my what I know column without going over 83 is 75 and five goes with 75. So we're gonna put a five up at the top. So five times 15 will give us 75. Then we're going to subtract these two numbers to get us eight. And then we're gonna bring down the next number. So now we have a number of 84. So we start back over. We ask ourselves how many times can 15 fit into 84? 
84 is not much bigger than 83, so it looks like we're going to use that 75 again. So we're going to use 5 times 15 will get us 75. We subtract these two numbers, and it gives us 9. Then we bring down the 0. Oh, yeah. It's all coming together. So it looks like we're going to get a good answer because I see on the what I know column there is 90, and 6 times 15 will give us 90. So we'll put a 6 up at the top. We'll multiply 6 times 15 to give us 90, and then we're going to subtract these to get us 0. And if we have a 0 at the end, that usually means a good thing because we're not going to really have very many remainders when we're using division anymore. Um, we'll learn a little bit more why a little bit later in the year. But yeah, we really want to look to have a 0 at the end. I used to have an old student that instead of drawing a 0, he would draw a donut at the end, and I really loved that. So shout out to Carter. Uh, had him a couple years ago. This is something I still use to this day. So looks like we have a pretty good answer, but we're not done yet. We do have one more step, and that is step eight, check answer with inverse operations. So the inverse of division would be multiplication. So we're going to take the quotient and the divisor. We're going to multiply those two numbers together, and what we should get is the dividend that we started with. Wow, that was really fast. Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three, quick maths. So if we follow all these steps, it might take us a little while, but we'll get a good answer to our division problem. All right, you guys, let's start with a couple problems. We've got n equals 756 divided by 12. So we are going to draw our garage. 756 goes on the inside because it's the dividend, and then 12 goes on the outside. Now we're going to make our what I know column. Now, like I said, what I know columns actually take a little bit of time to make. So I know that I'm going pretty quickly through this, but as you guys start practicing this, this is going to be the step that does take time. But it's a step that's really worth it. It makes it where you don't have to do as much work later. And I'm all about not doing as much work. 0 times 12 is 0, times 1 is 12. Then we get 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 84, 96, 108. Okay? If you can't do that off the top of your head like I just did, go to the side, do repeated addition. It will make it a lot easier, okay? We ask ourselves, how many times can 12 fit into 7? And that is going to be 0. We're going to subtract 0. That will give us 7, and we'll bring down the 5. Then we ask ourselves, how many times can 12 fit into uh, 75? It looks like 72 is the closest we can get without going over. So we're going to put a 6 over the top, and that's going to give us 3. Bring down the 6. Oh, yeah. It's all coming together now. We have 36 exactly, so we're going to put a 3 over here. And that is going to get us no remainder donut with a couple sprinkles. you got to have sprinkles on your donuts. Okay, but I always ask my students, are we done yet? No, we're not. We still have that last step of inverse operations. So we've got 63 times 12, and we're pros at, at standard algorithm now. So this is going to be super easy for us to do. We're going to add these up, and that's going to get us 756, which is what we started with with the dividend. So we know we got a good answer. So our answer is going to be 63. Okay, so let's move on to the next problem. We've got 3,519 and a weird slash. That weird slash just means we're doing division. Remember, operations can have a lot of different symbols, and this is just another one for division. So 3,519 divided by 23. So we're going to draw our garage. The dividend goes on the inside. The divisor goes on the outside, and the quotient will go on top. Then we're going to create our what I know column. I know I keep saying this over and over again, but guys, what I know columns actually do take a lot of time, okay? So don't think that this is going to be as fast as I'm doing it. I'm just trying to make it so the video is not super duper long, okay? We're going to list our numbers 0 through 9, okay? And then we're going to start multiplying. 0 times 23 would give us 0, times that would give us 23. Then we've got 46, 69. After that, we will get... Sit 92, 115, 138, 161, 184, 
and finally 207. So we ask ourselves, how many times can 23 fit into three? That is going to be zero. Notice that we're dividing by two digit numbers. So usually the first number is going to be zero, okay? So that's just a, a notice that I have. And we bring down the five. 23 goes into 35 just once. So we do that, subtract. That's gonna give us a two. That's gonna give us a one. We bring down the one, okay? How many times can 23 fit into 121? Well, it looks like the closest number we're gonna to get to is 115, so we'll put a five up here and then subtract by 115. Borrow one from here, that'll give us a six. Bring down the nine. Oh yeah, it's all coming together now. We have a 69 in our what I know column, so we'll put that there. We'll subtract, oh, I'm already getting ahead of myself because I'm getting so excited. And then we got our remainder of zero. Put some sprinkles on that bad boy, and we got a good answer. But we do want to double check with inverse operations. So I'm going to put 153 times 23. So 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. Placeholder 0. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 5 is 10. Placeholder, or put a 1 at the top. 2 times 1 is 1, plus 1 is 3. And then when we add those together, we are going to get 3,519. So we've got a correct answer. We feel good about that. 153 is going to be the quotient. Now, I will say division takes a lot of practice, guys. It's sometimes fifth graders' least favorite operation to use. But I know with a lot of hard work and practice, we can definitely get this down. I know there are other methods like the big seven that we like to use, um, and that's more than welcome to be used at this time, but really keep pushing yourself towards standard algorithm, and with more and more practice, you're gonna be the best at it, all right? All right, you guys, we love you guys, we miss you, and we'll see you later, bye.